Here in America, everybody knows that full-size half-ton pickup trucks are the sales king. In fact, the number one seller in the segment is the Ford F-150, with Ford constantly moving nearly 1 million units every year. That's right, I said 1 million units. Now, how about General Motors? This has always been Ford's arch rival, and in the sales race for best-selling title, the Chevrolet Silverado and GMC Sierra have always been number two, right behind the Ford F-150 in terms of sales. And as you can see, this giant beast that I'm standing by is the 2020 GMC Sierra AT4. Now I've already tested the 2019 Sierra when I was at the media drive last year and this week the 2020 model is basically the same handsome truck that we know and love. This AT4 trim is a new trim for 2019. It's got special off-road hardware. It's got a two inch lift on the suspension. It's designed to basically be like a Ford Raptor competitor. And with a variety, wide variety of engines, up to five available, it's also designed to appeal to a variety of truck buyers. So the big question I want answered this week, does the 2020 GMC Sierra have what it takes to steal away the sales crown from Ford? That's what we're here to find out. So as you can see, in a segment where a lot of manufacturers are oftentimes very conservative with changes, for 2020, the Sierra stays roughly the same. However, this is a radical departure from the old 2018, the third generation Sierra that we knew and loved that went from uh, 2013 all the way up to 2018. 18. The front fascia of this AT4 hasn't changed from the last one that I showed you, and I still think this is one of the most handsome looking trucks that you can buy in the half ton segment. I think it's better looking than the Ford F-150 and better looking than the new Ram 1500, but of course looks are always subjective. This black on black AT4 with the red accents really stands out. In fact, some of you may even think that it looks a lot like a Ford F-150. The grill is just freaking massive. In fact, the entire nose and hood of the new generation is much larger than the previous generation, which makes this thing look a lot like a heavy duty instead of a half ton truck. Now gone are the days also of halogen headlights on half ton trucks. All Sierra models will come standard with full LED headlights with these LED turn signals. The upgraded trims, like my tester, will have LED fog lights along with some silver accents. It is a really nice looking truck and the headlights are insanely bright at night. And I love the fact that GMC has made them as standard equipment across the board, even on the base trim levels. Now around the sides, you can see the truck's massive proportions are also easily apparent from this angle of the vehicle. In fact, as if, as if you thought the old truck was too small, GMC made this new one bigger. Now this particular one that I'm showing you is a crew cab short bed, which means it's got the five foot, eight inch long bed. There's also a standard length bed, which gives you a six foot, six, and a, uh, six, foot, six inch long bed. If you guys are looking for an eight foot bed, you have to downgrade to the regular cab version. This one, as you can see here, is the crew cab. So you've got the four full size doors. It's going to give you the most space in the back seat. And at 231 inches long, this thing is big. It's wheelbase at 147 inches long is honestly longer than some subcompact cars overall length. So again, she's a big truck. Here in America, we like things bigger and better, which is why GMC made this thing even bigger and better. Now, in terms of the wheels, this AT4 version has a 20 inch optional wheel with this black finish with the machine finish. It looks fantastic. You can also offer or get an 18 inch wheel. This one also has uh, Bridgestone Dweller all-terrain tires. And then my tester has an optional $3,000 high performance brake package. You can see it includes, uh, looks like a GMC branded uh, upgraded brake caliper with a six piston, much larger rotors, which are ventilated at all four sides. So again, this is going to give you the even better stocking, stopping power, which is important, especially considering this truck weighs a little over 5,200 pounds. Now this is the AT4 trim level. So it includes special off-road shocks, especially tuned suspension, additional skid plates, and up to 11 inches of ground clearance, which is very similar to a Ford Raptor. So even though some of you may be skeptical that this is a Ford Raptor competitor, just know that it does have the off-road ground clearance to nearly match that what Ford offers on the Raptor. Now around back, every GMC Sierra will come standard with full LED taillights, including this LED turn signal. Surprisingly, no LED rear tag lights, but you can easily change those incandescent bulbs out for an LED unit. And honestly, it also looks very handsome back here. I especially like how GMC is spelling out GMC over here. You got the Sierra badge, the AT4 badge. You've got these nicely integrated parking sensors. And then for short people like myself, there is this nice little uh, area where you can step into the bumper to get into the bed. Now, obviously the AT4 trim has these nicely integrated exhaust tips as well. I'll let you guys take a listen. This one here has the 6.2 liter V8 with the optional dealer installed high performance cat back exhaust.
like the Ford F-150 with its EcoBoost engine, this has a mean, deep, traditional V8 bellow. So this is really where a lot of traditional buyers are going to go with the big boy 6.2 liter engine. Now, of course, one of the differentiation factors between this and the Silverado is this multi-pro tailgate, which opens up in six different ways. In fact, this tailgate has been very successful for GMC. It is a game changer in the industry, uh, and it's a lot cooler looking versus what Ram has put out with the tailgate that opens up. Basically, there's a split down the middle and opens up two different ways. This offers multiple different ways. Now, obviously, uh, you can open up the tailgate in the traditional fashion. It is a damped tailgate, but when you open it up this way, it actually almost has like a built-in bed extender right here because you can pull uh, or open up this side over here. You can put longer items or you can wedge it along the back of this little portion over here. Closing the tailgate again, you can see if you push this portion right here on the top, it'll open up this little half area where you can use this kind of like as a table or you can also open up the same area that I showed you and it also creates a bed extender, which is again, pretty useful. And if you do this, you touch these buttons in sequence, you can see it opens up and then opens down over there to basically pull this down over here. And then there's also another area right there. So this creates a nice little step to help short people like myself get into the bed. And it also allows you to kind of get closer into the bed. So you don't necessarily have to get into the bed if you don't want to. But this step is definitely much easier to use versus the one you find in the F-150. It's a little bit more useful. And I also love the fact that the tailgate just offers so many different ways that you can open and close this thing. You can see there's also two cameras back here. One's for the backup camera, one's for that in-camera mirror, which is pretty cool. Uh, opening up the bed, there's also a new carbon fiber box bed. That's right, the entire bed is made out of carbon fiber, which GMC makes it says it makes it, makes it the strongest bed in the segment. As you can see, my tester doesn't have that. It just has the nicely reinforced spray-in bed liner. But this one, even the standard size box offers plenty of space. And if you guys want, you can also add in a uh, tonneau uh, soft or hard tonneau cover. Now, one of the areas that I think GMC or GM in general is really lagging behind the competition is when you look at the interior of this truck. This is like the opposite of the classic example, beauty is skin deep, because this truck is beautiful on the outside, but on the inside, it's a little utilitarian. It looks like GMC didn't really try as hard on the interior because it looks dated already. And I'm sitting in a truck that was fully redesigned last year. Now, that's not to say that the materials in here are bad. They're definitely not bad. They're mostly class competitive, except when you look at the fully loaded versions of the Ram, which could easily be mistaken for a luxury car. The dash has faux stitching everywhere on the upper portion of the hood on most of the uh, portions of the dash where it is soft touch. Even on this upper portion, it's soft touch with some nice storage. The door panels have basically the same materials, but overall there's just a lacking in there's it's lacking in terms of a warmth and like high end feel, which I know some truck buyers don't care. In fact, when I asked GMC, why didn't you look at the interior of the Ram? Why didn't you make this nicer? They claimed that their customers preferred the interior to stay more utilitarian, more familiar because they wanted it to last a long time and be durable. Because remember, these are going to be used for work, but also play. Now, the biggest, weakest link for this interior system is definitely that eight inch infotainment system. It does have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, but my God, does it look small in this truck. The gauges also look relatively old. You do have a seven inch helper screen and the steering column here is tilt and telescoping, but the wheel itself, aside from just the GMC badge, uh, it looks identical to what you get in the Chevy Silverado. It's also a very thin wim rimmed steering wheel. You do have uh, a heated steering wheel, heated and cool seats, 10-way power driver and passenger adjustment with two-person memory. So uh, the features are there. There's even a nice seven inch heads up display, which shows you a really good amount of information. But overall, in terms of that warmth, that luxury feel, for the price of this truck, I expected GMC to do a lot more. It's even more disappointing in the Denali version, which they you know, categorize as their own premium sub brand, but it just isn't professional grade on the interior. Now the back seat of this truck is massive. You get 43 inches of legroom, which is basically matching that, which you get in most of the competition. And really it's one of the reasons why a lot of families or American people are abandoning, you know, sedans and going for this as their family vehicle because it has so much legroom in the back. 
Now under the Sierra's massive hood, I could probably spend just one video talking about all five of the powertrains that GMC offers on this thing. The new engine option for 2020 is the diesel, which I briefly drove in Wyoming uh, last month. Sadly, this one does not have the, the diesel six cylinder, which has the most horsepower in the segment at 277 and 460 pound feet of torque. This one here has the $2,500 option. It's a big boy 6.2 liter V8, a small block pushrod V8 with direct injection and it also has cylinder deactivation to make 420 horsepower and 460 pound-feet of torque. Fuel economy also as it sits is around 14, 19. Remember the AT4 does drop the fuel economy slightly and this one as it sits will also tow a maximum of around 9,800 pounds. The Sierra if you go for a different trim uh, will tow a maximum of around 12,100 pounds which isn't the most in the segment I believe but it's basically right up there. This one also carries a maximum payload in the bed of around 1,700 pounds. Now uh, this one with the AT4 trim is one of the heavier options at 5,200 pounds. But despite that, uh, this one here, GMC says should get to 60 in just under six seconds, which should make it also one of the quickest. It all goes out through a 10 speed automatic transmission, which, a, which is a co-developed transmission. GM and Ford co-developed the transmission. You'll find a similar one in a Ford F-150. But you guys are probably curious with the big boy V8, with the high performance exhaust system, with the high performance air intake, let's see how this thing performs. Now driving the 2020 GMC Sierra, especially with that performance uh, cat pack exhaust, which is dealer installed for 1900 bucks. Ooh, she's got quite a growl, quite a burble that is very much what I imagine a lot of traditional truck buyers are looking for. The Ford F-150, if you don't get the five liter V8, just doesn't have this sound to it, which is just amazing. I love the noise. It's not too, you know, annoyingly in your face, but it's just there, the right amount where I'm just like, oh yeah, this has the big boy 6.2. Now the current generation Sierra still feels big. Even after driving the rest of the competition, I drive this thing and I feel like I'm sitting higher than some of the competition, except for maybe the Raptor, which has very similar ground clearance. You can see the interior lighting in this vehicle is very, very plain. There is no LED lighting. There's no interchangeable lighting whatsoever. Um, you do have basically two LCD screens. This here though, the rear view camera mirror is nice and GMC has improved the rear view camera mirrors re resolution and graphics and the view. It's now a very wide angle so I can see basically exactly what's behind me and I quickly got used to it. I really like that rear view camera mirror feature. <laughs> God. <laughs> now this one is obviously four wheel drive. You can leave it in two wheel drive if you'd like uh, to let the tail step out, especially when you don't have much uh, stuff in the bed. <laughs> this thing easily feels like it'll get to 60 in under six seconds. This is one seriously fast truck with a very nice shifting 10 speed automatic. Then the 10 speed in this car obviously GMC has tuned it specifically for this truck. When I put my foot down, it is very quick to go to a different uh, ratio depending on how much throttle I'm giving the truck. And it just puts the truck right in the meat of its power van. And most of the times I just found myself flooring it because I like listening to the exhaust system. Now with these big 20 inch tall all-terrain tires, you might think that it's a noisy truck in terms of the ride quality. And surprisingly not, this thing is very quiet. It has a very good ride quality. The visibility in it, you do have to deal with this massive hood, which kind of gets in the way, especially if you're going over some, you know, going over a hill, like if you're off-roading, which is why that, you know, off-road camera would come in handy where you could see basically the front of the truck. This thing also has a top-down 360 view camera, which is very, very useful, especially in something that's big for parking. There's the back end coming out a little bit. Oh, oh my God, this thing is good. <laughs> oh. Even the 5.7 Hemi from Ram doesn't have this quite sound. I wish Dodge or Ram would offer the 6.4 liter Hemi. A little bit of wheel spin there. God. <laughs> oh yeah, there's no replacement for displacement. That's basically what this engine screams. You gotta have a V8. <laughs> now granted, if I put this thing in a drag race with an F-150 with the 3.5 EcoBoost, I think the Ford might be slightly quicker. Not by much, but some of you have really expressed your hatred for the sound for that engine. So GM has the sound right. They've got the big boy engines. 
Uh, plenty of torque, plenty of power. The steering is typical truck. It is very slow and lethargic, but it is very, very much what I expect. It doesn't feel unsecure. This truck actually handles pretty well, considering how big it is. Love the visibility that you get. You basically feel like you're king of the road. The seats, um, they feel a little bit flat. The leather also doesn't feel all that high quality. The cooled seat function uh, does work relatively well. I like the memory seats. The steering wheel, I just think that the rim is too thin, although maybe that's what you want in a truck. It's just too dark, this interior. It's very dark, it's very dreary, drab. But surprisingly, you could hustle around the corners. Now, one of the changes that GMC has added again on the interior is uh, the addition of adaptive cruise control on this truck. It does include full speed range adaptive cruise control. So it works relatively well. It also has lane keep assist, automatic emergency braking, blind spot monitoring. So basically GMC heard the complaints how they didn't offer adaptive cruise control last year and they rectified it for 2020. So bravo to GMC for listening to uh, complaints there. Uh, the column shifter here, it's very much traditional, whereas like Ford has a traditional shifter here. Ram does the little dial. Some of you may prefer this. You actually have a manual mode here. If you put this thing into L, you can manually choose whichever ratios you want. So, I mean, there's very little for me to complain about, but there's also not much in terms of wow factor in this truck. The exhaust is nice. It's smooth, it's quiet, it drives nice. It gives you a nice view of the road. It's, it can go off road. But whereas the Ram, you have that beautiful you know, interior, which is leather stitched on the dash. You have that marvelous 12 inch screen. The Ford, you've got the massaging seat, which is very rare in this segment. So this to me is very safe, but I imagine GMC played it safe to, to not alienate their core customers and to try to appeal them to the mass market. But don't be surprised to see the company do an emergency refresh on the interior because it could use one. So the 2020 GMC Sierra, in my opinion, is easily one of the best looking new half ton trucks you can buy, especially in this AT4 trim where they delete all of the glitzy chrome that you get on the Denali and replace it with black accents. I love the fact that this has a two inch factory lift. I'm taking this thing out off-roading where I was on the GMC program. It rides and handles nicely. It has a nice sounding burly V8. It does everything that I expect a truck to do. And really the biggest letdown for the Sierra and the Chevrolet Silverado is their interiors. I think GMC or GM needs to work on an emergency refresh and give us a larger touchscreen, upgraded materials, just different colors on the inside to make the trucks on the interior match the beautiful looks on the exterior. So that being said, where does it leave the Sierra in the, the segment essentially? Now I asked earlier, does this have the ability to take away the sales crown from the F-150? Probably not. I mean, GMC constantly moves around a quarter million of these every year. Add in, they also do about 600,000 Sierras. So you're getting at around 800,000 units total of their trucks. Now that is actually only 100,000 units behind the Ford F-150. And although the Ford F-150 is due for a redesign in the next couple of years, the current generation is still a very strong offering. But I will argue if you're looking for that traditional small block V8 muscle and just a more traditional, more macho looking truck on the outside. This one along with the Silverado are still very much enticing options. Just keep in mind, if you guys are looking for the fanciest interior, these ones are definitely not going to have that. But with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the 2020 Sierra AT4. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews. Like us on Facebook. And as always guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.